Welcome to lesson 1.14, rational exponents. When we say rational in algebra 2, we're actually referring to fractional. It's a fancy word for fractional. So let's actually take a look at mini lesson 1. Consider the expression 6 to the half power. We discussed what it means to apply negative exponent and different varieties of exponent properties, but we haven't talked about what it means to have fractional exponent. So let's just pretend that this is some number, 16 raised to half power. A, it says apply the power property to simplify this expression. So remember, when exponent is raised to exponent, I multiply the exponents, right? So this means, let me just write it out, half raised to second power. This actually means this is 2 over 1, right? A whole number always has a denominator of 1. When we multiply the exponents or the fractions, 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 16 to the first power, which is just 16. Now, this problem says, what other number squared gives me 16? What other number squared gives me 16? 4, right? So hold on a second. If 4 squared is 16, and then 16 to the half power squared gives me 16, what can we say about 16 raised to half power and 4? They're equal. So what that means is actually that's crazy, right? Exponent of half is actually equivalent to a square root of a number. Okay? So now we covered a new property. We discovered a new exponent property. So whenever we have fractional exponent, that means that denominator is the same thing as taking the nth root. Okay. So denominator of exponent is equal to the index number or root number. So since we are, when we deal with fractional exponent, we need to deal with radicals, let's go ahead and take a look at some vocabularies involving radical expressions. When we have radical expressions, take a look at this diagram right here. This symbol is radical symbol. It has a little tail on the left side. Okay, It's different than the long division symbol, which does not have a tail. Now, usually when we have a radical expression, there's still this little number that's sitting on top of that little tail. It's called index number, also known as root number. And that refers to basically the number of time it takes to multiply some number by itself to get to what's under the radical. So whatever that's under the radical is called radicand. Okay. So when we have this expression, right, we read it as cube root of x minus 4. But what we're thinking to ourselves is basically this whole thing is the number when multiplied by itself three times gives us x minus 4. Okay. Now the symbol, this radical, without this index number is actually the symbol for square root. Okay. And so you know, mathematicians, they kind of got lazy, so instead of writing 2 here, they just decided that, yo, without any number, I'm going to call it square root, and this is actually always going to have that invisible 2 as an index number, okay? And so when we have 4 as my index number, I'm going to read that as 4th root, 5, then we're going to say 5th root, okay? And early in the year, I did teach you that to undo square root, I have to square, right? 
So guess what? To undo fourth root, I have to raise to the fourth power. These are inverse operations of each other. Okay. On to undo fifth root, I have to raise to fifth power. So on and so forth. All right. So the inverse operation of radical is always raising it to the exponent of the same index value. Okay, so then let's do some more digging. Let's just say, instead of keeping the numerator of the exponent 1, let's consider the expression 4 raised to 3 over 2. Okay? When we have 3 over 2, we can actually think of that fraction as 4 to the third raised to half power. Right, because exponent raised to exponent, that actually gives us 3 times 1 over 2. This 3 is technically 3 over 1. When I multiply, I still get 4 raised to 3 over 2. Okay, are we okay so far? But we can also think of 4 raised 3 over 2 this way. 4 to the half power, and then raised to third power. Right, Because here exponent raised to exponent, so I still end up multiplying, this is 3 over 1, right, multiply the numerators together, denominators together, 4 raised to 3 over 2 still, okay, so these are the same thing, but notice here, I can apply the numerator first, and then the denominator, or I can apply the denominator of the exponent first, or, and, the, and then the numerator, so these expressions are exactly the same. Okay, we're go I'm going to go ahead and verify it with you. So let's just do 4 raised to 3, and then raise everything to half power. But psych, we do need a parenthesis around that exponent. We can also do 4 raised to half power, and then raise the whole thing to the third power. Okay, these expressions are equal to each other. All right, I've done that. So then here, D, it says evaluate 27 raised to 2 over 3 without your calculator. Show your thinking, verify with your calculator. So here, literally, what we can do is 27, okay? We can break this fraction down into third power raised to second power, okay? but also combine our understanding of fractional exponent. Remember, the denominator is same thing as the index number or root number. So I can rewrite this as cube root of 27 raised to second power. Right? And what is cube root of 27? It is 3. So then, this problem becomes much more simple. Nine. I didn't use my calculator at all. So then I'll just verify this with you. 27 raised to 3 over, I'm sorry, 2 over 3. It does give us 9. So the main idea of this lesson is that when we have a fraction m over n, right, and that becomes an exponent of some base number, we can rewrite this as nth root of b and raise the whole thing to the m power, or we can rewrite it so that we can take the nth root of b raised to m power power. Long story short, what we are going to remember, the little phrase power over root, to remind ourselves how to use or understand fractional exponent. Okay. So again, power is exponent, and root number is index number. Right. So whenever we have power over root, exponent over root number, okay? So maybe this may be helpful visually, so I want everyone to write it down. b raised to exponent 
over root. Or b raised to, let's use the phrase, power over root. Which means I can rewrite it as root number. Remember, it sits on top of that little tail. b and then raised to power. Or I can rewrite it as root number, I mean that root of b and raise the whole thing to the power. Okay, so then let's actually try some problems without using our calculator. So again, we're going to do power over root. 16 is my base. Root number is 4. And I'm going to raise everything to the third power. Right? So you're thinking to yourself, okay, what number when I multiply by itself 4 times get 16? It's 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives me 16. So this turns into 2 raised to third power, which gives me 8. Let's try the next one. 25. Root number is 2. That means square root. And then I'm going to raise to the third power. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 raised to third power is 125. Try the next one. Ooh, this is spicy. It has negative. So here we're going to apply the negative exponent first. Okay? Negative means we flip. Where is the base right now? In the numerator. So that means I'm going to flip it down to 1 and then 8 to the 2 over 3. Positive. Right? Because negative exponent means you flip it and then change the sign of the exponent. Now I'm going to rewrite it as cube root of 8 raised to second power, right? Power over root. Power is the exponent, root number is the denominator. Cube root of 8 is 2. 2 raised to second power gives us 1 over 4. Okay. All right, let's keep going. For D to F, show all work to simplify, and then select the equivalent expressions. So whatever we learned about exponent properties still holds true. Let's look inside. Forget about this for now. Look inside. I'm dividing by the same basis. So I subtract the exponents, which yields me 28, 28th root of x to the negative 7. Now I do power over root, power over root. I'm going to use my calculator function, negative 7 divided by 28. I'm going to go ahead and use my math. Enter, enter. It simplifies to negative 1 over 4. Okay. So the correct answer is nah. Let's try the next one. Look inside first. B raised to, well, there's an invisible 1. I'm multiplying by the same basis, so it's going to be 20th root of 1 over 1, when I multiply by the same basis, I add the exponents. So 1 plus 7, which is 8. Now here, this gets a little bit funky, um, but regardless, it's okay. Uh, 20th root of 1. Listen, any root of 1 is just 1, okay? So here, I can apply 20th root of 1 over 20th root of b to the 8th in the denominator. This simplifies to 1, so it's going to be 1 over 20th root of b to the 8th. 
Now I'm going to do power over root. So I'm going to do, remember, b is still in the denominator. Power over root. Okay. Now I do want to simplify that a little bit. So let's do 8 divided by 20. Go to math. Frac. Enter. Enter. 2 over 5. Now, once I'm here, I need to look at my answer choices, but then I realized that, yo, all the Bs, the bases are in the numerator right now. My base is in the denominator, okay? So you cannot just go ahead and choose this, right? Because this base is in the numerator, this base is in the denominator. So what exponent property allows us to flip? negative exponent. So we can rewrite this as b. I'm going to flip it up and change the sign of the exponent. So my final answer is ka. All right, last one. Let's go get it. <clears throat> Before I start doing stuff with the outside exponent, remember there's an invisible one. We are multiplying by the same bases meaning I have to add the exponents, simplifying. When exponent is raised to exponent, I multiply the exponents. So then I can just go ahead and type it in my calculator, let my calculator do the work for me. Math frac, enter, enter. So I get x raised to negative 5 over 2. But what do you know when I look at my answer choices? None of them actually make sense. And I'm seeing radicals, right? So that means I got to convert it using, <coughs> excuse me, power over root. So remember, um, actually, let's not do power over root just yet because I see the negative. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it first. Now I do power over root. So power and root. Okay. Let's look at the answer choices. Now I can definitely eliminate na and la because the bases are on the numerator. My base should be in the denominator. Now let's look at these. You should go with ta because once again, no index number means there's an invisible two. Okay, That's why this symbol is called square root symbol. 